present as much as data as possible i think it's a, it's a very challenging task and uh, so it's it's way beyond uh, you know so i had to I, i read a little bit more than you know what we generally do in geo but uh, let me let me st- uh, let me start for your 15 minutes uh, let me you know as we go forward i'll i'll, I'll talk a little bit more but let me just start with the with our india so yeah we are a 1.3 billion people we are eight metros 27 states 600 dist- district 6000 talukas we've uh, in geo actually set up a fairly massive organization so we operate uh, you know with about 1075 1072 geo centers across every district headquarter of the country and uh, we also operate with about 6500 geo points covering pretty much every tehsil of the country so we're actually uh, we have a great understanding on the ground of what's happening uh, uh, you know in the country i think the important thing order to just state on this slide was that uh, if you look at on the on the left side of the slide you see india and you basically see 54 cities Uh, as we all know which are which have a population of more than a million and this is basically what is is the india which we know right i've, I've been doing some uh, advertising since since the last one year i think just about every campaign which comes which is to be urban actually is done across these 54 cities and uh, and just to also share with you that uh, if you look at our entire india our population density is about 416 people which is also very high compared to rest, to the rest of the world but if you really come down to some of these cities which are highlighted 54 cities or if i take an example of mumbai we have 21000 people per square kilometer so you understand where i'm trying to point out is what's happening in terms of density of population in our urban areas or especially these 54 cities <coughs> and the rest of the country let me go forward uh the urban india as we know it uh you know technology based evidence indicates you know that that india's urban population may already be actually in excess of 60% so you know so generally the, we say india does not live uh, uh you know india lives in its villages that's what the popular belief is that's what everyone talks about it but if we really uh, you know in, in terms of the organic data which we've derived uh you know we're seeing that 60% of the country is actually living in urban areas so it's slightly different than uh, uh you know what uh, what most of the google searches say and uh, on the other side you will see about top 20 cities which are you know which are where the large population exists and I'll, I'll i'll talk a little bit about it how this whole population is getting there uh and versus rural india uh, and i've just put out you know 5000 plus villages actually with a population of more than 10000 right so out of the 6 lakh 40000 villages india has it's just about you know uh, 5000 of them have a population of more than 10000 so it's more like you know you have one side you have a crumbling crumbling infrastructure you have uh, mumbai struggling with monsoons uh, everything goes down or delhi with uh, with all the climate issues bangalore traffic and you know the mess we see in ludhianas of agras of uh, or jaipurs uh, versus rural which is still very green very vacant and uh, you know it's it's heaven and hell and uh, so so let's go let's let's go forward uh, and let me then talk about what's really happening in india right and there's this whole uh, great migration which is going on so just to share with you i think some stats i picked up uh, you know there are every 2 seconds uh, in india and uh, in uh, in india you know you know some uh, in some part of uh, some part of uh, rural india is moving to the urban areas that's a massive 43000 people moving every day from rural to urban and uh, in the next 13 years actually the world bank estimates uh, about 40% of india will be moving to urban areas that's about a 300 million plus million people who are moving uh, on top of the 160 million people who are, which are there in the 54 cities i just mentioned so this and, and, and there's no stopping actually and i'm going to talk a little bit more going uh, going forward since the job was to demystify rural i thought uh, you know some 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 data would be interesting now you know what what is happening in the in the rural areas right so farming you know does not provide employment more than 4 months in a year there is this other 6 to 9 months where people move to urban areas right and a good number of them stay back and some and part of them actually go back uh, uh, to rural but there's a lot of migration which is going on and uh, and what cities run today uh, the crumbling cities with uh, with 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 population as dense as possible uh you know is running what we call as an informal economy uh, and uh, and of course there are all sorts of people there are milk merchants there are traders artisans middlemen 
you know, all, just about all of them are moving in. This is a very data-heavy slide, and you can, you, can, you can check it out, but if you see the red spot, this is actually from one of the articles from Economic Times. I made sure I pick up a reference of Economic Times. Uh, the, red, the red spot is actually the, the blue collar. This is the migrant flow, uh, and the black dots is where, uh, uh, you know, where... Uh, you know, so red spots are basically where the, where the migrants have come in and black spots is where the migrants have actually originated from. Bangalore is doing amazingly well in terms of uh, attracting the maximum number of people. Uh, and uh, and if you, you can imagine what's happened to the, to the, uh, to the population of Bangalore and uh, with, with that many migrants. And of course, Gurgaon and Delhi uh, uh, and Hyderabad. Uh, uh, and Mumbai, relatively smaller because I come from Mumbai, I mean, as, uh, I'm from Delhi, but uh, there is uh, a lot of effort which the city makes uh, to, you know, that the blue collar jobs don't move from Marathis, uh, you know, to, uh, uh, to, the, to the migrant population. So they've kept things in control, but I think the rest of the country is completely going crazy. And of course, the jobs they pick up. So today, uh, you know, anybody who's, people who've come in on an Uber or an Ola, you definitely have a migrant worker. You look at your lift man, you look at your, uh, uh, you know, the, the maid who comes to cook or, or basically, you know, every, each and every urban of us is being supported by four or six, uh, you know, rural people uh, who are daily parts of our life. And, uh, and they're all migrant. They're actually moved uh, from, from small cities or, uh, or from villages. Uh, let me go forward. I mean, uh, uh, so now let me talk about what's so so when this whole migration is happening from rural to urban and numbers are massive etc what else is happening uh, you know uh, you know from a rural side and uh, so just to share with you so uh, you know there are about we have about you know approximately directionally i'm talking about about 800 million phones in india and uh, and there is this factor of 1.3 so people use dual sim cards part of them so 30% people use dual sim cards and, uh, but I will not count that. So out of this 800, 850 million phones, half are smartphones and half are uh, feature phones. So there's a very large population of people who use those basic candy bar uh, feature phones. And uh, what started to happen now in the, in, uh, in, in the rural part of our India, uh, and, and it doesn't matter, I'm saying rural in urban or rural in rural, uh, there is, uh, they have, and these people have been given an opportunity, especially from Geo, to actually migrate into a phone which is called Geophone, which we've been selling for about 1500. We've actually put a Diwali scheme for 699 and uh, probably priced it just at the feature phone level. But the phone uh, is a 4G phone and, uh, uh, you know, uh, people can access internet, people can watch TV, people can listen to music. There's a whole lot of things which are possible. Now, what has happened is that we are, we are actually in the run of 100 million Geophones in the country. We've crossed more than 90 million already. Now, what has happened is that there is a segment of 100 million people who are moving into the internet for the first time. That they're actually large, uh, they're largely rural, and uh, so I just want to make just tell you that what's 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 really happening in this rural world. And this particular phone, where good 70, 75 percent people are now using data, are doing various things, etc., is uh, uh, you know is, is is where the rural is uh, of the country is changing. Let me talk a little bit more uh, what's happening with the rural world. So. If you look at the, if you look, if you look at the, uh, you know, the whole, uh, uh, you know, what's happening with the languages here. So, just just to share with you, right? So, the English in our country is just seven percent. Only seven percent of our country speaks English, and that's uh, and we know we see internet uh, as English. We consume, we upload everything in English, and we think this is our world. But actually, it's just the tip of the uh, tip of the iceberg. And uh, but if you look at Hindi is about 63%, the rest of the regional languages are about 30%. Now, as more and more rural people are coming on the internet through geophone and some of the low-end uh, uh, you know, smartphone, uh, smartphone devices, there is a, you know, a phenomenal demand for uh, vernacular content which is coming in. So today, uh, any, uh, I don't see a lot of startups here, but, but I can tell you anybody who's, who's had uh, vernacular as their strategy, uh, you know, they've just you know, grown uh, you know, at a, at a pace which uh, which is unimaginable. I mean, you know, so there are the, and there, there are a whole lot of them, and uh, uh, and if you look at the you know if you see the curve being bent, right? Uh, you know, from a from an English to a vernacular, there's a 12x growth over over the last uh, 10 odd years, and uh, so 
so, uh, so great amount of uh, uh, you know scale which is uh, coming uh, from rural uh, to the internet. Now, uh, so let me keep talking about rural uh, and. You know, one thing, I, I heard it earlier, Prahlad is a very dear friend, actually, I don't see him around, but uh, I, I just uh, didn't mention it at that time, but, uh, but I can tell you for sure that the, the current government has done anything and everything to actually, uh, you know, get the entire rural from dark ages to, uh, uh, you know, to, uh, and, and, you know, to basically to connect, uh, you know, basically get an, enough information about, uh, about rural. So I'll, um, uh, I just want to also watch the time. So very quickly, Disha is a government project by, uh, by the Ministry of uh, Rural Development. Now, what they have done is, so basically what was happening in India is that, you know, all ministries have different schemes for rural and they, you know, and, and all sorts of schemes uh, are out there. And every ministry has had a different database or understanding of the country, right? Even the city names or the village's name are different, etc. Now, they took this mammoth exercise of putting everything on a single, uh, on, a, on a single platform, on a single database, and, uh, and, and Disha is actually, if you can spend some time around, around Disha, you will realize how massive that work is and how much of impact this is going to, hap uh, this is going to hap uh, have to, uh, to, the rural, uh, to the rural world. There are today 42 flagship schemes which are uh, which Disha is covering. There are 20, minist uh, 20 ministries which are part of the scheme. And, uh, and, and the, the, just about every data of rural has been visualized here. Today, an MLA or an MP in any part of the country can actually sit down and get a complete understanding of different, uh, at what state different uh, schemes are, et cetera. And uh, it's a system which is working. And, and data is a great level, and I'm going to talk a little bit uh, going forward as well. We have created everything as Geo on back of data, so we have trust in it. Uh, you know, we, uh, we believe that, uh, you know, once everything starts to, so what's happening in rural is just what everything is going right. And I talk, I'll, uh, you know, there is, uh, there's, there's a data which is getting visualized. There is some, uh, there is a lot of unmet demand which the companies have started to understand. You know, everything, uh, and there is, uh, you know, food security bill, there is direct money transfers. There is a program of sending cylinders across to women across. Uh, there is electrician, uh, elect uh, electricity happening. There is uh, there's a lot which is going on in, uh, going on in rural. And actually, traditionally, we've gone with water supply, sea rates, solid waste management, traffic support, et cetera. And I think once we, we include software infrastructure like primary health, primary education, entertainment, electric, electricity distribution, just about everything starts to work together for, uh, in the rural part of, the, uh, part of our country is where the magic will start to happen. Uh, very quickly, uh, uh, I'm going to move fairly fast. So rural actually, so what happens is when your basic you know, food security is taken care of, the first place where the money goes, from, which is from a rural wallet, is actually the, on the FMCG products. FM, you know, rural already from a, you know, from a shared size represents about 45% of, of our FMCG industry. But the interesting part is that the growth uh, in FMCG by rural is about 16%, and that's double of what we see in the, uh, on the urban side. That's why you're going to see, and we'll talk a little bit uh, further about the investments which will flow in from the FMCG companies, uh, you know, starting this year, next year, but, but clearly going forward. Numbers are actually going, uh, growing from, you know, 23-odd billion to close to 200 billion uh, by 2025. So great times ahead, uh, you know, for rural, uh, because there's going to be investments and there is a lot of growth in front. Uh, Talking a little bit more is, uh, I heard about Dabo making a commitment of 250 to 300 crores uh, in rural, for, uh, you know, I heard about Paytm raising about a billion dollars, uh, primarily on top of, uh, you know, for rural, uh, we've seen some great stuff being done by Unilever, this is pure, the ladies are carrying a purit on their head, for example, of course, Patanjali originated uh, or largely focused on, on the rural. Geo actually has done its bit, clearly, we've... Uh, you know, so today, I mean, all of us can be very happy. We're no more a 2G country, we're a 4G country. So our 4G network is bigger than the 2G footprint today. And today, uh, and Geo didn't go around uh, the, the other telcos of putting up 4G network bases, the feasibility and, and the capacity of people's pay. Geo has actually put the network across. So today, in the smallest of the villages, uh, people use 4G, for use, uh, use full data. There is no difference we've kept between urban and rural. That's one. The second is the huge commitment through a geophone, making an internet-enabled phone with a GPS at a price of, uh, uh, you know, at 700 but you know, less than $10 now, which cost us, uh, you know, uh, more of 30, uh, you know, which cost us, you know, uh, upwards of uh, 30, 
30 to 40 dollars, you know, the whole lot of subsidy going in. So, uh, you know, a lot of investments flown in already. Uh, and let me, you know, just say that, uh, you know, there is a reverse migration which uh, we need to do. I'm going to just play uh, the last video. And can you loop it again and put some price? Uh, So I'll just uh, I'll just take 15 seconds just to t tell you what was what was this. So uh, we're from Geo's coming. So we uh, Geo and Unilever partnered together, and uh, you know understanding the pains of the women in the rural area, you know, and uh, we you know I think Unilever came with the research with the research that women in the rural part of the country are not working. The main reason is the husbands don't allow them to work. So we actually created a program called Wheel Gharse Career, where a husband and wife take a pledge, and uh, and there is a a small a program which we run on one of our apps called MyGeo, and, uh, and then we give digital certificates uh, back to them, etc. Because uh, as we, uh, so, and so basically the, the point really is that uh, today data is a big leveler, and uh, I think Geo is right at the center of it, and uh, I thought this, this, would be, this would be interesting. So thank you very much for your time.